This workshop is the second part of a three-part series. So in part one, uh, I really focused on video basics. Like I really did. I focused on, I focused on equipment. I focused on some of the things that you can easily and simply and cheaply and expensively buy to create a professional home studio. And I'll delve into some of that later on. If you missed it before, it's not that it, it's not going away and I'll talk about it later and I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions. But today I really wanted to focus on you. I really wanted to focus on your story and how you present yourselves to the world. Okay. So if you're just joining us, I just want to let you know that a um, a survey, a poll is up. So please answer that question. If you are just joining us, feel free to let us know where you are joining us from, because this is a group that is global. It's a global group now. And uh, let folks know where you're from. I know if you join late into the group, you don't see what's happened before. Um, so if you want to repeat yourself, I'm fine with that too. Uh, I'm going to switch to my presentation and just talk a little bit about um, the format that I want you to kind of be aware of. So I'm going to do a little pre presenting. We're going to do a breakout. We're going to do a little bit of sharing, which is really powerful. And then I'm going to share some video tips at the end. I've also got Q&A that we'll have um, at the end. But if you have questions that are burning and you're afraid you'll forget, which that's me, I would forget, just put them in the chat and I will go through them later. And I'll, I'll try and make sure that I don't um, forget them. So I am going to share my screen. So today we're talking again about how to grow your personal brand using video. And let me just tell you a little bit about, about my background first. And, you know, I've been in front of the back and in, in front of the camera, probably more than I've been off of it. It's just because right after college, that was my first really, that was my first career. I was a TV news journalist an anchor, a host. I did that for a long time for like 20 years. And six years ago, I decided to go out on my own, to take what I learned in the newsroom to help business owners tell their stories more effectively. And what I learned from being in front of the camera and then helping now, um, I would say hundreds of business owners get themselves in front of the camera is that we all start at the very beginning. I just want you to hear that. I really want you to hear that is we all start at the very beginning. My first job in television was in Macon, Georgia. I say that because some people know Macon, Georgia, and some people tell me they, you know, maybe they grew up there. Sometimes they've watched me. Very scary. But there was no, I had no business being on television when I first started on TV. I just started a very long time ago. I made all my mistakes live. I made all my mistakes in a place where I didn't know anybody. So when people say to me, um, I'm scared of being on camera, I don't want to put myself out there, 100% I get it. But now is the best place to start and the best time to start before you have an audience. And maybe you have an audience, still the best place to start because your best videos are to come. So that's what I do. And that's how I help people is I help them through workshops. I do media training. My passion is really helping you find the stories in your personal life, in your business that help connect you to clients and customers. I am extremely passionate about that. So I share this fact that I found online only because it's a really big number. <laughs> Not that you are trying to create an online course, not that you are trying to make money in this way, not for any other reason, other than it's a really big number. And Tasha, before I forget, are, are we recording this? I don't know if we are. Um, and I'm not sure if we should be, so I'm not sure. But um, if we are, feel free to. I don't know if we are or not. In any case, um, we are... Um, if you're live here, you're really going to get the best experience. But according to the website Oberlo, e the early e-learning market is expected to grow th <laughs> $325 billion. Grow to 325 billion by 2025. That's a lot of money. <laughs> that is a lot of money. And Tasha and I were also talking before this about how difficult a time it is for, for people who are making money online and for, for people who are trying to make money and they have 
uh, an in-person business. Maybe they have an event business. They have, it's, it's very, very challenging. And those who have been able to pivot to some sort of e-learning or workshop that's virtual, they have had um, some struggles, but also some success. However, if you are struggling or if you're trying to figure, how to figure out how to make this work for you, the problem I'm seeing is we business owners, and I'm including myself in this, we struggle sometimes with clearly articulating what we do and how we serve our clients. Does anyone relate to that? Like sometimes we have a challenge articulating exactly what it is we do. And maybe there's no exact in that because we do everything. We don't do everything. <laughs> I don't do bookkeeping ever. <laughs> uh, so what I do is I can help you find your story. And what I'm going to try and do is help you do that today. So you can figure out what you do for your clients and how you can really help them. So we're going to change that today. And if it sounds like you, you are not alone. 100%. I have definitely felt like that. And here's my fix. This is my fix. The things that we're going to be talking about today. So my goal is for you is to leave today knowing how to describe what you do simply and clearly so other people understand. Why it is important that you master the skill if you want to be seen as the expert in your industry. And that's how it ties into being a personal brand is it's simply if somebody says, who's Tasha Sanders? What does she do? And Tasha is um, the woman that I was talking to you about <laughs> who's with Old Dominion University. She's here on this call. But who is Cheryl Tan? What does she do? How can she help me? Who's Tasha? Who's Serena? What does she do? How can she help me? And it's simply being able to articulate that so other people know that and can repeat it back to you. How you can begin to create educational content your audience needs. And the one thing you can do to increase confidence in any situation, especially on video. Does that sound okay? So this is one of my clients. Her name is Shelly Smith. Feel free to Google any of these people because again, it's about connection and it's about um, if you Google them, you'll see what I'm talking about. And when Shelly first came to me, uh, she's just like all of us. She's an expert in her industry. I'm going to tell you what she does in just a moment, but she's an expert in her industry. And I would say that just like all of us, in, you just sort of struggle sometimes articulating how you help people. But Shelly is a culture coach. So she'll go into your business. And if you have a dysfunctional workforce, she'll make it better. Period. That's, I, I'm, that's pretty clear, I think. And now she is doubling down on this. And if you find her on LinkedIn, if you find her on YouTube, if you find her and you really can't miss her, if you look for S-H-E-L-L-E-Y Smith, um, she has a podcast, she has a video series, everything that she talks about is about culture and about how to create a more harmonious workforce. No question. So go ahead and flood her, find her. But all I'm saying is once she figured out that one thing, she doubled down on it and is doubling down on it and you can't miss her. So I just, I love that. This is another one of my clients who just did not like being on camera, just did not. Her name is Karina Carter. She is a mortgage loan, uh, mortgage broker. Basically she helps you buy homes. She helps you with the mortgage buying process when you're buying the home. That didn't sound right. Anyway, she has a great business uh, and she helps you save money buying a home through the mortgages. And she is doing the same thing on camera all the time. Even though when we first started working together, she really hated it. Like she almost did not enjoy working with me because I would just say, let's keep going. Say it again on camera. Let's keep doing it. And now if you find her, she's pretty much on camera every single day talking about the home buying process, connecting to loans. And, and now she's helping other mortgage loan officers grow their own businesses. All that changed for them was having a plan. All the people that I've worked with is just sort of understanding what it is you say, and then systematically sharing that with people in your world. You can do this. 
Okay. You can absolutely do this. And we're going to get through part of this, this first part, this clarity part in just a few minutes. So I've interviewed thousands of people, like thou just over 20 years in TV, just thousands of people. And from the, the celebrities to the politicians, to people who unfortunately would find me in a parking lot, asking them about what they thought about the latest tax that was levied, <laughs> like those poor people. But what I've learned is we all get clarity about our thoughts when we share our, idea, our ideas out loud. We just do. So today we're gonna split into breakout rooms. We're gonna split into breakout sessions. I don't know if you've done this on Zoom, but we're gonna do some magic behind the scenes. We're gonna do a little bit of math and split you out into breakout rooms with no more than four people per room. Each person will get the chance to talk about his or her business following the framework I'm about to share with you. There's going to be time for feedback for each person. So you'll have five minutes per person. It should not take you more than one to two minutes to go through this framework. And then you'll have three or four minutes to get some very quick feedback. I know it's not a lot of time, but it's, it's still some time to get, uh, to get some idea of where your brain is. And then we're going to come back and reconvene. And a couple of you will have a chance to share your story with a larger group if you want to. I don't strong arm people, but if you want to, and I think it'll be a lot of fun. Okay. So let me show you the framework that I have been using for, uh, for years. And I will tell you that I developed these frameworks after starting my business, because when I was on the job as a reporter, I had a ton of deadlines. Uh, I would do show, I would do stories for the five, five 30, 6 PM shows, no framework, I just did the job because otherwise I'd get fired. So it was after I left the, the newsroom that I realized what I was doing was a framework. And now I've put it together in a framework. So it, it, it may, I, I hope that doesn't feel like, well, she didn't do that on the job. No, <laughs> when I was on the job, I would get fired if I thought about it in this way. I just sort of did the job. But now I've been able to break it down. And I think this is a way that is a successful one to help you create clarity in your own mind and verbalize what you need to say to all of us. So we understand what it is you do. Okay. Um, let's go to my next thing. Okay. So my PST framework is this problem, solution, transformation, take a screenshot, write it down, um, but I'm going to go over it. So the PST framework is simply this. What is the problem you solve? I know it sounds simple, by the way, like I know it sounds really simple on most of the things in life, I think are, but really focus on the problem that you solve. I'll go through this in just a moment. What is the solution that you have to that problem? Now, this has to be very clear. I know you have a solution. Sometimes maybe you haven't clarified it in this way, but it could be putting your books together. It could be a, a weight loss plan. It could be an eating sort of thing, like something related to diet and menu, that kind of thing. But whatever that is, that's what we need to talk about here. And then finally, and this is really important, is the transformation. What is life like for your clients after you solve this problem? So for example, I could say the problem that I solve, people come to me Okay. You, you can start with this too. So start your sentence, start your um, little uh, spiel out, your one minute spiel, one, two minute, that, not more than two, is people come to me when they know they want to start using video, but they're stuck with getting to that next step. They're really stuck. They don't know what equipment to use. They're overwhelmed by the content in their head, and they really don't have a system to make these videos happen. I've created a video boot camp, a five week video boot camp, boot camp that takes people from zero to video in about a month. That gives them the step by step path that they need to start creating video that makes sense for their companies. So what happens after that is once my students go through their through through the boot camp, they start creating video on a regular basis, once a week, every other week once a month, whatever makes sense for their business, but it becomes part of their marketing and it's powerful. So that would be my problem solution transformation. I would shorten it up if 
I was doing it in front of a huge group. And I had like, you know, like sometimes BNI will have you like, you can say your thing in 30 seconds, but I would definitely shorten that up. But wherever you go, if you go to uh, some sort of networking group, you can use this, you can use this for videos, you can use this in any way. But for today, I'd love for you to problem, solution, transformation, think about that. And you can start your video, you can start your time, not your video, start your, uh, your discussion when you are in your small group with people come to me when and what problem that they're suffering and dealing with. So for me, that's transformation, that you as one of my students or clients will be able to do that on a regular basis. So uh, Megan, thank you for sharing like that. For So we once we get to that, it's just creating specificity. And sometimes it's having somebody who's a stranger, seriously, somebody you've never seen before to hear what you say. And you're like, oh, that's what you do. And so this can be, so valuable. All right. Any other takeaways? I'd love to hear a couple of more takeaways, please, that you received through this process. Um, and for those of you who just joined us, um, any, was it good? Was it worthwhile? Was it? Let's see. This is Dorothy. It was just very helpful. Oh, thank you, Dorothy. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, Tamika is saying it was good to talk with yeah. others and to hear different perspectives to problem solving from different yeah. industries. Oh, so good. We're all from, we're from around the world here. Um, and we all have different things that we're coming to the table with. PJ says it's difficult when the transformation is dependent upon the client to do their part to achieve the desired outcome. 100%. Let's dig into that in just a little bit. I I'm going to have, um, let me ask, uh, does anyone have someone who knocked it out of the park that would like to share? You guys know, like somebody, maybe in your group, maybe it's you, someone who has a really great like pitch that they did raise your hand. Cause I'd let's, let's share. And somebody who'd be willing to share this with the group. All right. Um, hi, I'm Megan. I'm in Norfolk. Um, people come to me when their high school student is starting to think about college and researching and thinking about um, heading off after high school. Um, but uh, students and maybe parents feel overwhelmed by the amount of information and how much things have changed since parents were in college. Um, they're confused, um, especially right now with, with things changing with COVID, or they don't know where to start. It's such a big, big process. They just don't know where to start. Um, so I am creating um, uh, workshops, small events, small groups online, and hopefully back in person um, to help students through the different pieces of the college research and application process. Um, I've also created one-on-one -on -one counseling with a step-by-step -step plan to help students really think about what they're looking for in a college, schools that would fit, programs and opportunities they might not have thought of um, so that they can really find that place where they're gonna thrive um, academically and personally. And so what happens after all of this is that students feel less anxious. They feel like they have um, the tools and the knowledge to move on from high school into college. Um, they feel more confident uh, knowing that they have a plan. Um, and parents and students maybe feel less stress amongst themselves or less anxiety um, and more knowledgeable as uh, students are approaching college. How many of us now know if we know someone who Megan can help, right? How many people got so much clarity from that? That was awesome. Thank you so yeah. much for sharing. I've got two, I've got three teenagers. <laughs> My voice is shaking a little. It's harder it's, when you have to talk to people. It's I know. <laughs> I know. Look, everyone, I know how scary this is. Like again, a room full. We are in a room full of strangers, but that makes it even the mo even more powerful. Like now you have strangers who are who who. This is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen, Megan. Okay. So someone on this call is going to be like, well, you know, either I have kids or I know someone who's about to graduate or someone who's going to be in 10th grade who might need this. And so they're going to Google you, Megan. They're going to Google you and see if you have videos or if you have anything on your website that might help them, that may be a, a, a window into whether you can really help them. So this introduction is just an introduction, but now people are like, Ah, that was great. I know what she, I know what she can do. Like, let's see if she can help me. That was excellent. Do you, do you all agree? I know you agree. Yes. Does someone else want to go? Um, someone who has awesome Courtney, um, let's go to you and, um, 
Problem, solution, transformation. Megan, thank you. Okay, Courtney, please take it away. So my name is Courtney Williamson and I help people to figure out how to manufacture their physical product invention um, in 90 days without quitting their day job. And I do that so that people can actualize their dream of having whatever invention they have on the market um, in customers' hands. So the problem is that people have an idea in their head that they want to turn into like this idea in their head that they want to turn into something and you help them actually take it to market. Is that what you do? I help program. It's not any, it, it has to be something like a physical gotcha. item. Yeah. Cool. And so once you do that, then they have something that they can sell on the shelf Black Friday or New Year's Day or Valentine's Day or something. Okay. Very cool. How many, that was super clear. Like how clear was that? And when you, Courtney, if you were to do that in a pitch of some sort, try that in that way. Do you have an idea in your head that you mm -hmm. just, in your head that you're trying to get onto the shelf? Right. Here's how I solve that problem. And then when, you know, when I solve that problem through my step-by-step -step process or whatever, they have a shelf in 90 days. They have something on the shelf in 90 days. But that was really great. It was super clear. If someone is an inventor or an inventor to be, they're gonna Google you and see if you have any information that can help them through your process. Does anyone, um, does anyone have any, um, any, any desire of being like sort of coached through some of their, like, I'm not sure, their clarity kind of thing? I think, um, was it PJ? Did you want to get coached? Did you want to share what you have? Oh, somebody said that PJ had a good pitch. Hang on. Um, so tell me, like, does someone, does someone want to get coached or share their pitch? You can do one more. I, I'm PJ Deloach and I am a success coach. For people who have a goal that they want to achieve, that they don't have accountability to anybody else. It's just something they wanna do. I help them define the goal, develop a plan and provide accountability for them to be able to reach that goal. And what happens once they reach that goal? What, what, what happens once they have that accountability? Well, ideally the accountability comes from me that is missing. That's, that's the whole problem. There are lots of people, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with um, Gretchen Rubin's book, mm -hmm. The Four Tendencies. Mm -hmm. the, um, the obliger is the person who is really good at achieving goals as long as their boss wants them to do it, their mom wants them to do it, their kids need it. But if, when it's something that's just for them, they mm -hmm. tend to not be able to get it done. So right. I'm the person who can provide that accountability so that they can achieve those goals that are just for them. So ideally, nice. after working with me, there's an improved quality of life from the success of achieving that goal. Is the goal uh, usually something tangible? Is it like a book? Is it launching a business? Is it putting a project product on the shelf like Courtney was talking about? Like, is it usually a thing or is it usually like, feeling better. So like, that's where I'm going to ask you to sort of think about, is it typically something tangible, like um, a clean house or 10 pounds off of your body or um, more money in the bank? Like all of those are very different things, but if you help them through accountability and help them with uh, your process to getting things done, I, by the way, I love the obliger thing, because if you connect the obliger with Gretchen Rubin's book, you can actually target obligers. You can target them somehow, some way you can like call them out. You can be like, Hey, are you an obliger? Like did Gretchen Rubin really just call your name out and describe you when she described an obliger? And then you can say, I'm PJ Deloach. I help people just like you and I help you. And so is it, is it usually like writing a book or is it like, do you, maybe you, maybe you don't know that, but you can think about that. Yeah, it could be, it could be any and all of the above, right? I mean, okay. some people have things like, I want to run a marathon, you know, mm -hmm. so, oh. you know, yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I need to come up with a plan so that I can run a marathon. 
So you know, what we could do, yeah, is call that out too. Like, do you want to run a marathon? Do you want to write a book? Do you want an organized house? Those are all different things, but they could all be things that are all self-focused. And if you're saying that that obliger is someone who won't do it for themselves, then they need that accountability because it's not for anybody other themselves. Like, well, a clean house maybe, but like uh, a, a marathon is simply for yourself. Right. So if you, if you connect those two dots, then um, you have something pretty powerful. So let me just ask the group, what did, what do y'all think about that? Did, are we clear on what PJ does? Do you know someone who could yes. use her help? Yeah. Do you yes. know somebody? Yeah. Do you know someone who needs her help? So what, they, yeah. what you're going to do, right. If you know somebody who is an obliger, somebody who is selfless, um, probably any woman, you know, who, <laughs> sorry about the, that men in our, here in our group, but, uh, any woman who wants to do something for herself, uh, maybe they should reach out to PJ if they want to do that next thing. That's scary. A marathon, a 10 K write a book, uh, get on stage, all of those things. So what they're going to do PJ is they're going to Google you. Like, who's this PJ Deloach? Does she have any credentials? Like, has she ever done this before? Has she ever taught this before? What has she ever done? And um, that's where we're going to go to next. Um, any questions? Any questions that I can answer right now before I go back to the slides? Thanks uh, so much for that feedback. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Was this helpful? Absolutely. Um, PJ, it's interesting because I work for or I partnered with um, Total Life Change just real briefly. Um, and I help people change their lives through feeling better through health and wellness products and you know just giving them back hope. And that sort of piggybacks on that obliger. A lot of us like me, I'm a disabled vet, you know, I have been depressed, you know, just sort of withering away, giving up on life to some degree, and especially with the coronavirus being isolated. Um, you know, we need to find something in our lives that you know, put some fire under us again and believing in God. I believe that by using these products, which I use them, they've changed my life. I've lost weight. I have more energy. I think clearer. I see hope at the end of the tunnel or light at the end of the total, so to speak. And telling people about these products is I'm actually marketing myself by showing them that this thing works. Look at me, you know, I'm actually doing this. I've never been able to get on a treadmill. I had six service connected disabilities uh, from being in the military and I've never been able to stay on a treadmill more than 10 minutes. I'm on a treadmill now an hour a day, every day. Because Good for you, Beverly. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank you. So what I wanted to do, Beverly, thank you so much for sharing oh, yeah. and great feedback. What, um, th this, this program, uh, this particular workshop runs until 1130. I know some of oh, you. Sorry. <laughs> So, um, no, 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 it's okay. But I wanted to just respect the, the time that some people might have to, to jump off. And if you do, and you wanted to share your email address, post mm -hmm. it in the chat for anyone who wanted to share that. Um, so I'm going to continue with the, with the program and continue ask, uh, answering any questions that you might have. But, um, but this workshop is the second in a three-part series. So the first part, uh, which we did last month, I really focused on the equipment and video creation. This session, we're focusing on you and what you say on camera. The third session that will take place on December 15th, will be focusing on the process, how you create video, like actually how you do that. And for today, I'm really gonna talk about what people do once they know about you. So let's say they hear about you through, let's say they hear about Megan through somebody here, right? It's like, oh, I, I, you know, I met this woman online. She helps kids who are trying to go to college. They're going to Google her, right? And what will they find? And so that's part of being that personal brand is being able to back up what people think about you with what, oh, hold on just a second. I'm going to try and share, uh, back up with what people think about you with what they see online and having that content that backs up who you are. So I will tell you that if you Google me, uh, you're going to find a lot, like you're going to find all of the things that I've done. It's very public, bad or good. All my videos, I've got a YouTube channel. I'm on all the platforms. I've got all kinds of, um, free PDFs and video series and all of that. So like it or not, uh, for me, it's out there and you're going to make your own judgments from me on me 
with what you see out there. So if you are thinking, I need to create something. Oh my gosh. PJ's thinking, oh my God, people are going to reach out to me and want to know about me. I better have something and I need to create video. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. If that's you, um, I just want you to hear what I tell my students and clients is to use what you have. Use what you have right now and then level up when it's time. Level up when it makes sense for your business. Like maybe you're making more money, but use the phone that you have right now to start creating video. Okay. And I'm going to go through that very briefly. I talk about the basics. And uh, if you are somewhere kind of loud, if you don't mind muting, thank you so much. Um, speaking of the basics of video is focusing on audio then your video, and then your lighting. Audio is one of those things that if you have a bad piece of audio, like if you shoot something and the audio is poor, reshoot it, just reshoot it because people won't watch a video they can't hear. And it makes sense. We are probably doing something else when we are watching a video. And if you can't hear it, you might as well some, find something else. And so if you're a creator, really focus on your audio really, really focus on it. Sit in a quiet room with carpet or window hangings. If you don't have a microphone, you can get a microphone. I've got a list right there of the ones that I use at CherylTanMedia.com slash resources, but I have a microphone wherever I am. Like I have one on my computer that's tied to my computer. I have one that I clip into my phone. It's there on my resources page. In terms of video, Use the camera that's in front of you. You probably have a smartphone, iPhone, Android does not matter. It's probably good enough. It's probably HD. You can always buy more. You can always buy more. But usually when people wait to buy, it's a lot of money and you could have just been spending time creating the video. And then lighting. I'm, I always look for the light. Like I'm always looking for light sources and I'm sitting in front of a light right now. I'm also sitting in front of a, of a window. So when you're on video and you know, you're about to be on video, focus on where that light is. And when you are on camera, I just encourage you to take a screenshot of this, um, is to really focus on increasing your energy. We are in, uh, I, I shared that uh, statistic earlier, is that e-learning will grow to a $325 billion industry. That means that there are a lot of people who have stuff to sell and stuff to teach. It means there's a lot of, there's just a lot of competition out there. People always ask me, how do I stand out? How do I break through the noise? Part of that is showing your passion, right? Showing that you care about what you're talking about, smiling, uh, increasing your energy, wearing a solid color that you love. So like focusing on the stuff that you can focus on. And then we also focused on your messaging previously when we did the breakout session. So focusing not only on how you can come across on camera, but focusing on what your audience wants to hear. And so we did that just a little bit of go and, and really knowing that if you are talking to college senior, uh, high school seniors or high school juniors, that they are thinking about certain things that a new inventor is not. And talk to those people. Talk to the right people in the right way and they will listen. I have a bonus tip I wanted to share with you that is so hard, but so critical. And I want you to take a screenshot of this, please. <laughs> because uh, if you don't feel confident on camera today, the more you are on camera, Tasha, the more you are on camera, the more confident you will feel. One of my students, I just, I wrapped up on another, a more like a, I wrapped up the last session of my video boot camp for 2020. And one of my students said something I thought was so good. He said, talk to yourself. And, uh, and I told him to do this, but he, he just, I liked the way he said it very succinctly is every day until he got really comfortable being on camera is he would pick up the phone and he would shoot a one minute video of himself, just talking into the camera. Like, you know, he'd turn it on, hit the camera button, um, turn it to selfie and just hit record and just talked. He just talked about his thoughts for the day. Maybe it was something he learned yesterday. 
Maybe he talked about what he was eating. He talked about what he was doing the day ahead, whatever it is, not going anywhere except on your camera roll. And he will use that in the future, perhaps as content, but more importantly, it helps him create confidence. And now he had never done any video before we started working together in the video boot camp. And now he shoots a video at the drop of a hat. He just shoots it. He'll like take two minutes, go outside on his patio or whatever and shoot video and post it up to YouTube. It's powerful. Like it is powerful and people know who he is and what he does. So to recap, I really want you to work on this PST framework, problem, solution, transformation, just keep working on it, keep honing it. If it doesn't connect and you know, when it doesn't connect, by the way, it doesn't, if it doesn't connect, if people who are hearing it don't understand what you're saying, keep working on it. People do need to hear what you have to say. And so you can use the problem, solution, transformation framework to create videos that you drip out over time. So not only does it work if you are introducing yourself, but it works if you are talking to people about any particular subjects. Maybe it's about Botox. Maybe it's about Invisalign. Maybe it's about um, cleaning solutions. Doesn't matter. You can use this framework for every video you create going forward. And if you're not sure what your audience wants to hear, ask them. Clarity comes with action. I just want you to just know that. So um, <clears throat> if you're a local, some of you might know this woman. Her name is Angela Reddix. She is one of my, uh, she's one of my first clients, just such a, a dear, a dear woman. She really is a fantastic businesswoman. She owns a, uh, a government contracting tech a medical tech company, medical health tech, it's hard to describe. <laughs> she owns a, a large government contracting firm. And several years ago, when we started working together, she started a foundation, um, a nonprofit organization to serve middle school girls, at risk middle school girls, to teach them the skills of being an entrepreneur. entrepreneur. And she's served at this point uh, about a thousand young women. And one of the things that she said to me that I just thought was so awesome, she said this, she said, never did, never did Cheryl say that's impossible. She's talking about her crazy dreams. She said she wanted to start a foundation and I never, ever said to her, that's impossible. And so I say that to you. I don't ever want you to think any of this is impossible. I believe in you. Like I believe you can create videos. I believe that you can share your message with more people. I will never, ever say that it is impossible, ever. You can do this. You can grow your personal brand with video. It starts with clarity, which is what you got today, some of that clarity today. And then it then continues with you sharing what you know on camera. So I have a video series. Like I said, I have a ton of stuff <laughs> that's for free online. But if you want to get it through email, you can sign up for this video hacks video series at cherylTanmedia.com slash waitlist. So what you'll do is if you, you go on this right there, uh, cherylTanmedia.com slash waitlist. I can actually type it here in the chat if that is easier and you'll sign up and you'll get a video hack for three days, every day for three days. And then I also use this list to share upcoming programs. And of course, I'm a business owner. I've got a lot of things that are coming up. So if you're interested in any of that, you will get that as well. Um, that's it for the formal presentation. Um, I would love to take any questions that you might have. Feel free to raise your hand. You can go to the chat um, or raise your hand, just raise it. <laughs> I thought I saw a question. Meg, please, what's your question? Hey. Hi. Um, so, um, I have never actually uploaded any video to LinkedIn and I was just wondering if there's a best practice for LinkedIn. Should you, if you're doing the video on your, um, iPhone, should you, um, upload it to YouTube and then put the link to your YouTube, um, video on LinkedIn with, a, yeah. Okay. No, no. Great question. It is a great question. And it's one that I'm going to ask you sort of what your goal is. Um, so I have a YouTube channel and I am also on LinkedIn. Um, but I will, I, so this is me. I, for me, this is for me. I would post my YouTube channel on LinkedIn. Now for you, you might be interested in growing your LinkedIn presence. 
And if that is the case, I would post the video natively to LinkedIn. So I want to grow my YouTube channel. Um, and if I post stuff on LinkedIn, it just so happens that I would use LinkedIn. Does that, does, I, don't, I hope that makes sense. So if you're trying to grow your LinkedIn, post it natively to LinkedIn. I'm trying to grow my YouTube channel. So I would post my YouTube channel, even though I know posting a link will cut down on my engagement. It will. So, um, but good, congratulations. So when are we going to see your video? <laughs> well, I am um, baby steps. I'm getting yeah. there. I'm just, cool. this has been really, really helpful. Um, good. So I can actually just do the video like selfie mode and then just upload and I can select LinkedIn. I mean, I do that for other platforms and just mm -hmm. select LinkedIn. It is scarily easy how you can do that, <laughs> <laughs> isn't it? Like it is super scary how that happens. But, um, but the thing is, is all of you are experts in what you do. And, and that's, what's really powerful is to be able to share that with the people who need to hear it. Someone else had a question. Uh, oh yes. Uh, Courtney, please. Um, this is kind of weird, but where do you look in the camera like so yeah. we're on zoom and I never know I'm like looking at myself I'm looking at people yeah. then I look at like the green dot where do you look mm -hmm. where is the camera great question um so I'm like me today I was I'm not self-centered I promise I'm just talking about me a lot but I'm right now looking at Courtney like I'm looking right now at Courtney but I also know that I'm not it looks like I'm not looking at her. It, she doesn't think I'm looking at her, even though I'm looking at her. Mm -hmm. So when we are on camera, we have to be aware of what you all think. Now we're on a zoom and we're, you know, we're all kind of looking around, you know, so it's okay that I'm looking at Courtney, even though she can't tell. But if I, if, but when I was presenting earlier, I was looking here, which means I was looking at my camera, which means I can't see you guys. So if you, right, if you are, if you know that people are going to watch you and that you want to connect with them, if you really, really want to connect with them, then you need to be looking into the camera. And if you're not sure where, where that is, because sometimes it's hard, like, honestly, sometimes it's hard to tell with these cameras, it's hard to tell where your camera is and where you're looking is record yourself and then watch back what you've recorded. Okay. So, yeah, I know, but Sometimes it doesn't matter. So like, again, I'm looking at you, Courtney. It doesn't matter, right? You guys are okay. Like you can sort of see, right? <laughs> um, okay, think of questions while I look at the poll. And so I'm gonna end the poll and just show you the results. You I have see a that? question about um, yeah. the audio. What kind mm -hmm. of microphone, I mean, how do you improve your audio? Mm -hmm. I, first of all, if you don't have a, an external microphone. Like I have one, but can you tell the difference? Like you can tell, you can tell the difference, right? I know you can tell the difference when uh, you just can't. Um, yeah. This is an ATR 2100. It's on my resources page that I shared with you earlier. And it is a USB microphone that plugs into my laptop. You don't have to, you don't have to get one. I'm not saying you have to get one, but if you are if you were serious, I think it's one of those things that you may consider having, uh, making an investment in. Um, if you don't have a microphone, then just be cognizant of where you are. Um, I am in a room with low ceilings and carpet and window treatments, which means I've got some muffled, I, I can muffle sound, which is good. So if you don't, like, I think um, uh, Dr. Hamilton, uh, I think you've got high ceilings where you are. So you might have a bit of an echo. Maybe you go into your bedroom where there are window coverings if you don't have a microphone. Um, if you have a microphone, it doesn't really matter. Um, but just also be aware if you know your kids are running the microwave, which mine was, they might, they were earlier, they were doing the microwave. Uh, you'll hear that if I didn't have this microphone. Um, I do segments still for a local TV station. I do them from, like I, I literally do them from here. And I, and that's why, I mean, I would have a microphone anyway, and I would have the professional lights, but I have to tell them to not eat because <laughs> the kitchen is right next to me. I have to tell them not to eat because that would be distracting. So they can, they'll live, they, they eat other times. Um, did that help uh, doctor? Yeah. Uh -huh. okay, that, that helped. And how about, um, 
Is it easier to make your video on a Mac versus a PC or like a um, Apple um, computer? Okay, I'm a Mac girl. I am a Mac girl. However, however, um, I have heard that PCs are better. Like you, you can get more memory on a PC. I have issues with storage on my Mac for any Mac people. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm like at like 90% hard drive. My, I've, I'm like maxed out almost. Um, Macs are great and I love it. I am using a web, I'm using a webcam. So I'm not actually using the Mac camera right now. I have the uh, Logitech C920. It's an HD. A PC has a lot of power. So while I'm not 100% well-versed in a PC, you can, you can get some pretty video. I mean, it all is pretty video. Like to me, a pretty video is pretty video. And I love pretty video just like anybody else. You can get pretty video on your iPhone. You can. You don't need to buy a new one. I mean... You can't, if you were going to buy one anyway, I'm not going to stop you, but don't let that stop you either. Any other questions? These are great. I did. I had an, a question. Hey, Rashida. Hi. Um, I am a um, jewelry designer and I sell jewelry. And so reaching out into the world of video is going to be completely new because most of my interaction with my customers is either through local face-to-face -face markets or... Um, now I've had to transition into a lot more online because that's been cut down. Yeah. And so most of my engagement with customers comes from social media, like Instagram and Facebook. And so I'm definitely going to start doing the video a day challenge to get myself more acclimated with applying the principles and really refining my story. Yeah. But is there any difference or additional tips when you're using those social media kind of platforms, like the, I guess it's the, the videos or the lives and that, those sorts of platforms. Um, well, any difference meaning um, your tone or any difference meaning like how you upload it? Uh, which well, one? I know with, with the, I guess it's, I guess it's with the, the presentation because oh. I know I've done some before. And for me, it feels like there's less control over it and that they can sometimes come off just really. And I know that some of the benefit that they come off really raw and personal and just, Oh, what it I got is. you. Yes. But I want it to be more in line with my brand and how I'm trying to just portray that, you know, through all of the posts and stuff. So I, this is actually, a, this is a really great question, Rashida. And it's something that we delve into in my first module, module one of the video bootcamp is what you want your video to do for you. Because if we are on social media, if we're on reels, if there's a lot of stuff on, there's a lot of noise out there, right? Like you're probably following a bunch of people online and you're seeing what they're, they're putting out there. And you're like, do I need to do that? And so to me, the answer is, how does your video tie into selling your jewelry? And if it doesn't, that, if it doesn't tie into that, then don't do what they're doing. Now, if it does, then see how you can use the medium. It's so super powerful. How you can use your story to help people understand the power of the jewelry that you create. Did you, did you, do you make the jewelry? Is that what you said? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's all handcrafted. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's huge. So there's, so there could be a real personal component for your particular business in how you source your raw material, maybe how you come up with the designs, how you put the pieces together. I mean, there, there's definitely a, a way that you can use video that incorporates more personal aspects but whatever you put out there for any one of us needs to tie in to the end result, which is selling jewelry or selling services or having people come into your store or having them hire you. So if it doesn't tie into, um, there's, um, let's see, she's not here anymore, but there's a, a woman who's, who here is a government contractor sharing her innermost thoughts about her dinner are probably not gonna help her land government contracts. It may help you though, Rashida, if, you, if that ties into an, a piece of inspiration you received to create your latest piece of jewelry. Okay. Does that make sense? 
Yeah. Yeah. And so everything is, everything is so personal and it, and it's tied to, it's very tied to how we want to show up related to what we do. Um, and so, I mean, Rashida, you, you have a, actually, you have more um, than some, not all, but you, you have more of a, a, of an opportunity if that's what you want to share more of yourself. Yeah. If you want, I mean, again, yeah. I'll I was just worried about share, you know, where, where that line is of like too much, because I see a lot of people post things. And mm -hmm. so I, that's been one of the reasons that I haven't posted so many videos is because it's just like, do they really want to know all this about me? But then I'm seeing more about yet. Yeah, yeah. Because that's what the jewelry ends up being about me. It, and, and it's something you think about beforehand because maybe it is and maybe it isn't, but that depends, that depends on how comfortable you are, of course. Yeah. But now you have sort of, I think you, then you kind of have roadblocks, right? You have like boundaries, like, you know, you know, I'll, I'll talk about this, but I'm not talking about that. And I'm definitely not talking about that, but this is fair game. So kind of having all that mapped out beforehand can be really very, very useful. Okay. Um, oh, I, this, you. the, oh, you're welcome. Awesome. I'm, I hope that helped. If, the, I um, a, if I can make a quick suggestion about her jewelry and her videos. Yeah. Yeah. If, if she makes a video about each piece telling what inspired her to create that particular piece, it would create a connection possibly with potential clients. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very good. Awesome. That's really great stuff. Um, the poll results, if you guys had um, not seen them, but uh, on a scale of one to 10, with one being invisible, 10 being star power, how well do people know what you do? Um, most of you said, six of you, said six. So that's great. That's really, really great. And so now the job is to share that on camera. And I hope this has helped you. Um, any takeaways you'd like to share before we wrap up? What's the one thing that you can take away from our time together? Post them in the chat, please, because it helps me to uh, know if this was helpful. And then we've got my next one, uh, our next workshop on December 15th. So if, you know, if you're wanting to join us for that, let, let me know or let, um, well, you'll be able to, to sign up for that <laughs> in the same way you signed up for this one, but please share, please share a takeaway with me. I'd, I'd really appreciate that. Cool. Megan said using the PST framework to structure videos specifically to products and services, as well as introducing myself. I just, I love that. I just love, thank you. I love the framework itself and it has helped me in so many ways when I create my own videos. Um, any it other thing? a bit of a template, a way to sort of say the ABC framework, framework mm -hmm. template. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it absolutely is. Well, good luck to you and to all of you as you make that journey online. If I can help you in any way, please let me know. Um, Meg says this was very helpful. Made me want to start posting video. <laughs> My resources are all online, so go for it. <laughs> Be aware you might get overwhelmed and I apologize ahead of time, but that's kind of the name of the game, right? Um, uh, Noliani, did I say that correct? Noliani? Uh, takeaways using practice to develop confidence. Practice makes confident. Uh, Lisa likes the idea of taking a one minute video every day and practice for future use. I love that. And I appreciate your time this morning as well. I think there's a survey that comes out uh, from the Women's Business Center. If you get that, please uh, respond honestly and let me know how I can support you and make anything better that um, maybe I maybe missed this time. So thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure hanging out with you today. I thank you for your time. It's been a pleasure and I can't wait to see your videos. I can't wait because I, I always say that to everybody and, um, and I love it.